This video is part two of an Audio Basics series. In the previous video, you learned how sound works, what it is, and how it travels through space. To watch that video, click here. In this video, you'll learn the properties used to describe a sound wave. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kyle. If you want to learn more about audio production, subscribe to Audio University. First, I want to talk about phase. As you learned in the previous video, sound waves are cycles of positive and negative air pressure changes. On a graph, it would create a circle. Phase describes the various points around that circle. If you add time to the graph, the circle becomes a sine wave. On this graph, the y-axis shows the moments of maximum compression at the top and maximum rarefaction at the bottom. High pressure at the top, low pressure at the bottom. On the right-hand side, the x-axis shows the progression of time from right to left. Phase is measured in degrees. Although the zero degree starting point can be anywhere along the wave, in this graph, the zero degree point is at the start of the compression phase, as the line intersects the x-axis heading upward. The 90 degree point is at the height of the compression phase. The line heads downward, crossing the x-axis again at the 180 degree point, the 270 degree point is at the lowest point on the graph where the rarefaction is most extreme. And finally, the 360 degree point is where the line returns to its original position. One 360 degree revolution is called a cycle. Sound waves oscillate very quickly, going through many cycles of positive and negative pressure per second. Frequency describes how many of these cycles are completed per second. Humans are capable of hearing sounds in the range of 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Frequency corresponds to musical pitch, although musical pitch is affected by other factors as well. Generally speaking, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. For example, if you double the frequency of a sound, the pitch of the sound will rise by one octave. If you cut the frequency in half, the pitch of the sound will decrease by one octave. Frequency is measured in hertz, abbreviated HZ. One cycle per second is one hertz. 1,000 cycles per second is one kilohertz. As I stated before, humans are capable of hearing sounds within the range of 20 cycles per second and 20,000 cycles per second. In other words, they're capable of hearing sounds in the range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Whereas frequency describes how many cycles are completed per second, the period of a wave describes how many seconds it takes to complete one cycle. Period is therefore a measurement of time and is measured in seconds or usually milliseconds. A sound wave with a frequency of one hertz has a period of one second. A sound wave with a frequency of two hertz has a period of half of a second. As you get up into the audible range above 20 hertz, milliseconds become a lot more useful than seconds. Wavelength and period are very often confused, but they're different. Period is a measurement of time. Wavelength is a measurement of distance. Wavelength describes the physical distance it takes a sound wave to complete one cycle. Here's an animation created by ISVR. I've linked to it in the description of this video. It's really helpful in showing the relationship between frequency and wavelength. Lower frequencies have longer wavelengths whereas higher frequencies have shorter wavelengths. To calculate the wavelength of a given frequency, use this formula. Speed of sound divided by frequency. Although differences in temperature and humidity can have an effect on the speed of sound, using the standard 1130 feet per second as the speed of sound in this formula will give you a very close to accurate result. Amplitude describes the extent of the pressure changes. Higher amplitude sounds have more extreme compression and rarefaction phases. Lower amplitude sounds have less extreme pressure changes. The center line of this graph represents zero amplitude, meaning normal air pressure. As the waveform travels further above or below the center line, the amplitude grows. The unit of measurement to describe air pressure intensity or amplitude is the Pascal. However, the huge range of amplitude that humans are capable of hearing makes the Pascal very difficult to work with. For that reason, we use the decibel. More specifically, we use decibels of sound pressure level, or dBSPL. This chart shows why decibels are so much easier to work with than Pascals. 
These values are written from quietest on top to loudest on bottom. In the first column, you see the range of human hearing represented in pascals. These numbers are not very convenient for calculation or communication. Using the logarithmic scale of decibels, however, provides much more manageable numbers for our minds to understand. If you're feeling a little confused about decibels, it's okay, you're not alone. All you need to know is that when you're talking about sound pressure level, adding six decibels doubles the sound pressure level, whereas subtracting six decibels cuts the sound pressure level in half. This has been video number two in the Audio Basics series. If you got value out of this video, hit the like button, consider subscribing to Audio University, and check out the website at audiouniversityonline.com. I'll see you in the next video.